Hello everybody, in this tutorial I will be showing you how to make an adventure game in Scratch. So let's get started. Let's start with our character. Uh, for this tutorial I don't want to make it too complicated with the graphics and stuff, so I'll just make uh, a square for my character. So I'll just make mine 5 by 5 like this oh, and delete these and I'll trace over this um, like this whoops yeah I'll just use this and then I'll make two eyes right here alright so this is going to be the front view of the character. So let's make the other views, which is the back view and the two side views. So duplicate this. For the back view, I'm just gonna um, hide the eyes so it looks like it's you're looking at it from the back. And for the two side views, for the right side, I'm just gonna move this like so. And the eye right here. Okay, right here. Yep, and for the left side, I'm just going to flip this costume and move it a bit to make it aligned with the back side. Alright, right here. And make sure to center your character. That's really important. So I'm just going to move it so that's in the center. Right here, I think. Yeah, this is center. I'm going to do this the same for the back. All right. And the side. So right here and right oops. And right here. Yeah, okay. Now let's create the hitbox. The hitbox will control the player movement and will detect if it's touching an obstacle. So I'm going to duplicate this sprite and then delete these three costumes and I'm going to fill this with a uh, black color. Now let's go to events and then grab a when flag clicked, a forever loop, an if else statement, if key up arrow is pressed, then change the Y position by 3. Grab another if else statement. If key down arrow is pressed, then change y by negative three. And then another if else statement. If key right arrow is pressed, change x by three. And then lastly, an if statement. If key left arrow is pressed, then change x by negative three. So now, if we run this, this black box, which is the hitbox, should move like this. Now I'm going to make the character permanently go to the black box. So, when flag clicked, in a forever loop, go to sprite 2, which is the hitbox. So now, the character is always on the black box. And let's make the character go to front. So now, so now that's in the front, and yeah. Now we want the walking animations where the character switches to the different costumes when we press a different arrow key. So grab a if else statement. If key up arrow is pressed, then switch costume to costume two, which is this one, because you're looking at it from the back. If, if you press the up arrow key, grab another if else statement. If key down arrow is pressed, then switch costume to costume 1, which is this. Grab another if else statement. If key right arrow is pressed, then switch costume to costume 3. And then if statement, if key left arrow is pressed, then switch costume to costume 4. Now we have a full movement animation of the player. And make sure to set the ghost effect of the hitbox to 100. 
so that it is invisible. So now, it's like this. So now, I'm going to create an obstacle. So I'll just make a house. So I'll just draw a rectangle right here. And a quick roof like this. Alright, done. So now, I'll just reposition the house. I'll just put it right here. And now, let's make it so that if the player is touching the house, then it stops. So, go to the hitbox, and then add an if statement. If touching your house, or your obstacle, so for me it's sprite 3, then change y by the opposite of your value, so negative 3. And then grab another if statement, if touching sprite 3, which is your obstacle again, change y by 3, if touching sprite 3, change x by negative 3, and then if touching sprite 3, change x by 3. So now the player should not move when it's touching the house. So yeah, this works. However, as you see here, it's not really realistic because the house has a roof and the player isn't going under the roof. And when the player is going in front of the house, it's not actually in front of it. It's just standing from a distance. So let's change the hitbox so that looks more realistic. So go to costumes and then let's cut out the top part of the hitbox. So I'm just gonna take out about this much, half of it. So now, if we try, oh, okay, let's make the character go to front, put it in the forever loop. So now the character, as you see here, actually stands in front of the house instead of standing right here before. So, yeah. However, if the character goes to the roof of the house, it doesn't go under it. So let's change that too. By doing this, you'll need to have to duplicate um, your obstacle sprite. So right click, duplicate, and then one of them is going to be the bottom layer and one of them is going to be the top layer. So let's make the door area be the bottom layer as the character goes on top of it. And let's make the roof area the top layer so because the player goes under it. So I'm going to go to costumes and then delete the roof on this sprite. And go to costumes and delete the door area on this one. And now let's just set all of these to 0, 0. This one too. So now this is pretty similar to the house as before. Now I'm just going to fix something right here. So, so that's not that blurry. And okay. Now for the bottom layer, go to looks and then select go back. And then I'll just say 99 layers to make it go at the most bottom layer. And then go to your top area and then select go to front. And now, since you want your top layer on top of the player, so you can't have the go to front in the forever loop in the player, else that's going to be always on top of the roof. So let's just put it right after the wind flag clicked, and then for this one, put a forever loop in it. Now, if you play this, um, this should work. Yeah, so it's going under the roof, and it's going on top of it, yet it can't go past the door area. And since the character sort of disappears behind the house here, I'm just going to change this part right here by adding more of it. So I'll just make it bigger. So now, okay, and a, a bit bigger than that. Okay, so as you see here, the character stops here. 
and ghosts under the roof. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. This tutorial just covered the basics of how to make an adventure game, but if you guys want me to, I can make a part 2 talking about the more advanced topics like enemy encounters and player interactions with other objects. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you learned something, then leave a like and subscribe while you're at it. Anyways, that's it. See ya.